How do you use Mod Organizer to play both Skyrim and Enderall on the same game installation? That is the question I'm going to answer in this video. In the first video of this series, I described how you could set up two different games of Skyrim, one for the original Skyrim and one for Enderall, and then use Mod Organizer to mod the Enderall one. In this video, we're going to do something a lot more advanced. We're going to use the Mod Organizer profiling to have Enderall running and allow us to switch very quickly between Skyrim and Enderall on that single game installation. Now, I am going to assume a number of things here. Firstly, I'm going to assume you know how to install Enderall and have the files downloaded. If you don't know how to do that, I have done a video on how to install Enderall normally. You should understand the basics before you attempt what I'm doing in this video. Secondly, I'm going to assume that you are comfortable with the Mod Organizer tool and possibly have some experience modifying Skyrim using it. I have done an entire series devoted to Mod Organizer on Skyrim and I highly recommend you go off and watch that series. Mod Organizer does have a lot of very cool features and it's well worth knowing what you can and cannot do. So let's get started and talk about what we're going to need to get Enderall running on our Mod Organizer modded Skyrim. I'm going to assume that you have a relatively vanilla installation of Skyrim. If you're using Mod Organizer, you almost certainly have no mods in the data folder. You're using Mod Organizer to do all of your modding. You probably have SKSE installed, don't worry about that. Enderall does come with its own version of SKSE, but it is the latest version, and although it will overwrite the one you have, it should be the same as the one you have and work with your, both your normal Skyrim and Enderall. If you're running an ENB, you might want to disable it temporarily, move the DLL files somewhere else. The Enderall developer team do recommend playing without an ENB, and of course, it is a new world space with completely new lighting and there's no guarantee your ENB of choice for Skyrim is going to look quite right for Enderall. You could test that out later on, but I would recommend at the start disabling it. And of course, you will have to make sure you have all the relevant files that you need. You have to make sure you've got Microsoft.NET Framework 4.5 installed. You have the installation file that downloaded from either ModDB, Nexus or Torrent and the launcher from Enderall.com. So we have all of our preparations made. Let's start Mod Organizer and get it set up for Enderall. The first thing to do is create a new profile. I'm gonna go along to Manage, Create, and Enderall. Of course, this is going to need local save games and automatic archive invalidation. Well, it doesn't need local save games, but I really think it makes sense for this complete conversion mod. Switch to the new profile and hopefully there will be absolutely nothing selected here. That's good. And I will need to deselect all of the ESPs. Don't have anything selected. You don't want any of these ESMs or these ESPs and indeed make sure all of these archives have been deselected as well. The next thing to do is make sure we have the Enderall launcher in our main folder for Skyrim. Paste that there. And then of course, go along to our executables and add the Enderall launcher. So Enderall launcher. The binary, of course, I'll have to find. There it is in my Steam. Steam apps, common Skyrim. You should know your uh, Skyrim location well by now. And over, no, I'm gonna leave everything else as is and hit add. I now have the Enderall launcher. I'm now ready to start the installation process. To start the installation process, we go along to our drop down menu, find the launcher and run. You will get the readme, which you should read, and then a pop-up window, click install. Of course, you have the warning about the ENBs, click there, read the terms of a license, hit accept, 
As you can see, it tells you what the requirements are and tells you if you meet them. It seems to think my GTX 980 is not necessarily good enough to run. It is, so I'm going to hit install anyway. And then I'm going to choose the new installation. You're going to need to know where the install file is. Mine is on a completely different hard drive. There we go, rather large file. Hit next. I'm going to leave the backup path exactly as it is. You can move this, but whatever you do, do not change this to be somewhere in the data folder, for example. You can pretty much have the backup anywhere you want, but do not put it in the data folder at all. If you've got some clever ideas, do not do that. You need this backup to occur outside of the data folder if you're installing it with Mod Organizer. Click Next, check these options, and then start the installation. Now, the first thing it's doing is it's backing up Skyrim. It's actually moving the physical files from the data folder into a backup. And it's actually doing this. This is a little unusual for Mod Organizer users, but it's actually doing this. Don't panic, don't worry. We'll get back to that a little later on. It then begins the installation. Once it's finished, hit close installation. Now at this point, if you were installing it without Mod Organizer, you would update immediately. We are not going to do that for now. You could do that, but I'm not going to do that because I actually want to show you the update process and uh, I've got to do that while there is an update available. So I'm going to quit. You've probably noticed all of these little warning signs uh, telling us that lots of files are missing. They are indeed missing. Don't worry about it. It is not a problem at the moment. What is important right now is to go down to the bottom and check out the overwrite section. If we go to the overwrite section, I'm going to double click on it. You can see it's got a lot of new files. We need to take these files, I'm going to right click and create mod, and I'm going to call it Enderall. It will then create a new mod for me, if I double click on that, with all of those files. I'm going to, well for now I'm going to leave this down at the bottom, it's just a little easier to find. Actually, no, you know what, it probably should be at the top. It is going to be one of the main mods. It's going to be the base for everything once I start adding mods. I'm going to select Enderall and I will now have a few more files. But I still have these warnings and we're going to get rid of those right now by once again running the Enderall launcher. And now we're going to hit update. It's already telling us actually an update is available so I can click there. I'm going to hit the download now and allow it to do its thing. Once it's downloaded, it will need to be restarted. There you go. Now, I'm going to close this once again. That has got rid of one of the warnings and added a Skyrim ESM file. And if we go along down to the overwrite section and double click, you can see it's added quite a lot of files. All of these files, I'm going to select them all, need to be added to the Enderall mod. So I'm going to drag all of those to the Enderall mod. Once it's finished, close. I'm going to double click Enderall just to check. There you go. We now have all of the files we need. And if I look at data, it's all looking pretty good. And that's it. You now have Enderall installed. You can run the Enderall launcher again to tweak the settings. And that's generally how I recommend changing the settings. But any settings that you change here, for example, will appear in the any file for that profile. Let's have a look. Two and four. There you go. So you can use this to tweak your settings. I wouldn't use this to run the game if I were you. It's just a little easier to go along to SKSE, select that, and then hit run. And if all goes well, you should have the new Enderall background and the option to start a new game. So we now have Enderall working with Mod Organizer. We've installed it and we can run it from Mod Organizer. But what happens if we want to go back and play Skyrim now? 
let's change back to my vanilla profile. And immediately you'll see some warnings down here and a complete lack of plugins as well as some of the archives. This is not a big surprise because if I go to my data folder, there's very little there. We've lost Skyrim. So how do we get it back? Well, when we were installing Enderall, what the launcher did, if I go back up to my Skyrim folder and go into the Enderall launcher folder, is it created a backup. I'm gonna go into backup and Skyrim. Here, we've got the Skyrim Ini and Skyrim Prefs backup, but we don't need to worry about those because our profiles have all of that data. What we need is the data that it backed up. And what we're going to do is we're going to select all of this and we're going to create an archive. Now I'm going to use a WinRAR and I'm going to add an archive and we're going to call it Skyrim Base Files. And I'm going to leave it to do its thing. This might take a little while. Once it's finished, you should have a rather large archive file. Go along to Mod Organizer, hit this button here to install a new mod from an archive, select the archive you just created in the backup Skyrim data folder, and add, I'm going to call this, what does it give me the option? Base files, Skyrim base files. I'm just going to check everything is okay. Yes, everything's okay. And it will now extract those files. Now it is actually possible to bypass the whole creation of an archive step and manually copy the files across yourself, but this is just a little simpler. I generally prefer to go through the mod organizer's interface directly where possible. Once it's finished, you can actually delete the archive you created. No reason to have large files hanging around for no reason. Go down to the bottom of Skyrim Mod Organizer, take the Skyrim base files and drag it right to the very, very top indeed. Where is, um, there you go. Select that and the files now appear. Of course, I don't need those ESPs because I'm using Mod Organizer. I can now switch to say my Richard the Librarian profile and I have to do the same thing. I have to take the Skyrim base files, move them right up to the top and select them. All of those um, errors should disappear. And hopefully now this profile will be working. Of course, I have to do all of the profiles now, all of the profiles that require those Skyrim base files, otherwise they just won't work. But once finished, I should have a bunch of working profiles for my original Skyrim game and still be able to switch quickly back to Enderall. So there's my Enderall profile with the Enderall files and now Richard the Librarian. And of course, just to test, I'm going to start up the game. There we have the Richard save. Everything seems to be working just fine. Now I'm gonna quit this switch quickly to end it all and see if that's still working. End it all, run, and there you go. End it all background, I can now continue with my end it all play. Now you might be wondering why I manually created the Skyrim base files mods from the backup rather than doing something like running the Enderon launcher and restoring Skyrim and creating the mod that way. That would actually work. However, it would leave the Enderon launcher configuration set up to think Enderon was not installed and believe it or not, your Enderon profile would no longer work. It's just a little easier to do this because you, again, you can manually mess around with files to make it think it's installed, but it's just easier to do it this way. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. You can now play Enderol from one profile, Skyrim from another. You can create more Enderol profiles if you wish. Perhaps you want an Enderol vanilla profile and yet another one with mods installed. This is very easily done. Just remember to have Enderol selected in any of your Enderol profiles 
and do not select the Skyrim base files for any of those. Skyrim base files are for your Skyrim profiles. Enderall, you could even call this Enderall base files if you want, if you really want to uh, identify the base game files. Now, there is one disadvantage to doing it this way, and that is if Skyrim updates, if the base Skyrim game updates. Now, this is almost certainly not going to happen very often. I think Skyrim's pretty much done. But if they do update it, you will need to update your Skyrim base files. Now, I can't really show you that because, of course, the game isn't going to update anytime soon. However, if that happens, it's not that difficult to get this fixed. It will just take a few minutes of messing around. And if Skyrim ever does receive such an update, I will immediately create another video showing you exactly how to do that. I'm guessing if you followed this video, you can probably guess how it's done. Of course, I know people are going to ask, which way would I recommend doing uh, an installation of Enderol for Mod Organizer? The single Skyrim installation with multiple profiles, as I've done in this video, or the two separate installations of Skyrim, as I did in the past video? And my honest answer is, that is completely up to you. The dual game installation, as in two Skyrims, has the advantage of being, well, completely separate. You could, for example, run an ENB for Skyrim in one and a different ENB or no ENB in the Enderal one, if you so wish. Of course, then you have two games. You've got to keep them both in order and it takes more room on your hard drive. And of course, there is the disadvantage of when you're downloading mods, it will only open automatically one of your mod organizers, and it might not be the one you particularly want. It's not the end of the world, but it's something to bear in mind. Having a single installation of Skyrim, as I did in this video, has the advantage of saving a little space. You have only one mod organizer to worry about, and therefore it doesn't matter whether you're downloading mods for Enderol or the normal Skyrim, you're set, there are no problems. It does have the disadvantage of being a little more complicated to set up. And if you're running an EMB for one, you're probably going to be running it for the other. So if you're not willing to constantly tweak your ENBs or switch the ENBs, this might be a problem. However, I do know there are some ENB managers out there and perhaps you can set them up with Mod Organizer to select one ENB for a certain profile. I haven't tested that out. I may actually go off and do that. And if it works, I will probably make yet another video. However, that is all we have time for in this video. I hope this and the previous video were helpful. I hope you managed to find a solution for playing Enderol and Skyrim that suits you. And of course, you are more than welcome to join me for any of my other videos. I look forward to seeing you there. And remember, as always, have fun.